So I've talked a lot about how not to run an agile transformation. So I suppose it's only fair to talk about how now I go about running one. So you'll be familiar with the five mistakes that all failing agile transformations make. These tend to happen at the start of an agile transformation. And number one, the highest, the most important, is lack of informed dialogue around what we mean by agile. My response to that is, is that what leaders need to do is to start to understand what they mean by an agile transformation or what they mean by agile just to start with. And the first step in my uh, what I call my pretext model, my pre-transformation model, is to run what I refer to as an Agile Leadership 101. Now, I'll put a little diagram up here for you to actually have a look at, and this comes from my book. Now, this is just a one-day informative but interactive, and sometimes we have a little bit of fun, in what I call an Agile overview. And it primarily is for the leaders of the organization. Now, let me just identify and clarify for a little moment here about who I mean the leaders to be. I don't mean the people who now have been targeted with running the transformation, i.e. they've been told from on high, here, you must go and run an agile transformation. No, these tend to be the leaders who live at the executive level of the organization, quite often the directors, certainly led by the CEO, because this leads on to the second mistake as I uh, point out in my five mistakes of agile transformations, is, is that quite often the transformation isn't sponsored or owned by the CEO or the person at the very top of the organization. I'll talk about that in a bit more detail at some point, but maybe not just now. The important thing is, though, is to talk about what we mean and what we don't mean by agile. And more specifically, this is where I actually ask people to think about the different levels of agility within a transformation. So look, there are a number of topics, as you can see down here, and there's eight dialogue topics. Now, I'm very specific about the word dialogue because dialogue means something very particular to me. It means that the people at this top table that are going to be discussing what they mean by agile transformation need to have informed conversations about what is and what isn't agile, or what is or what isn't considered to be an agile transformation. And very often there's some, uh, I might call them tricky topics that come up from time to time. Because in my world, I believe a transformation is something that impacts the behaviors of the leaders, and it also impacts the thinking of the leaders. And again, my definition of the leaders, those people who sit at the top table, the XCOM, the executive committee, directors, people who are running their organization in, in the way that they see fit. So they are the ones who have complete autonomy and power to change all of the necessary parts of the organization that will need to change if you were indeed going to run an agile transformation. And that's the purpose of this Agile Leadership 101, is to get people's headspace thinking about what is going to have to change. Because let, let, let's, let me give you just one example here, because this is an important one. And I come across it every time in every organization. It's only a matter of time. When we start talking about Agile, Agile culture, Agile transformation, no sooner do we start to talk about that, leaders will start to talk about efficiency. Now, efficiency for me is, is a bit of a swear word, not because I don't believe we should be efficient, but actually it's the wrong conversation. Well, let me put it this way. It's the right conversation, but at the wrong time. Because if you want to be efficient, that's a very different set of conversations to the conversations about being agile or doing agile. And I can go into that in some more detail for you. In fact, what I'll do is I'll put some links on here at some point in the future to point you off as to why efficiency is not the conversation to be having, at least not right now. So what are the conversations we need to have? Well, look, Agile has now achieved what we might call fad status, that everyone seems to be talking about Agile, and if you're not doing Agile, and every man and his dog seems to be, then you're a bit behind the curve. And, and, you know, that's an absolute fair comment because if we're talking about agile process as opposed to 
agile organizations or organizational agility, or an even better expression, business agility, if we're talking about that, that's a different set of conversations to agile and agile process, because that's something that's considered to be the remit of the IT department. If your IT department, for instance, right now is not running some form of agile within their department, then they're prehistoric, they're behind the curve. And honestly, you need to now go and fire the head of your uh, IT department if they think or if they're saying to you that agile doesn't suit how they work. Because the very definition of agile is to be able to pick and choose what is the most appropriate forms of process to be able to work most effectively in your organization. And whilst some people might say that one form of agile process or framework is better than another, that's absolutely fine. You can have those discussions, but you'll need to be running some form of agile framework, some form of agile process within your organization, and to be choosing at appropriate times between Agile process versus waterfall process. That's just a given. But that is just a small discussion point within the IT department. And again, when I go into organizations and we start talking about organizational agility, there's a mistranslation goes off in people's heads. They start to think that I'm talking about agile process, that thing that happens in the IT department. No. Organizational agility Business agility is a very different set of conversations, and that's the very thing that we go through here on the Agile Leadership 101. It's about helping people to understand why organizations are exploring organizational agility and why that is the topic of some conversation. We'll talk about VUCA and all sorts of other stuff in, in the near future. What level of agility does the organization need? Because look, there's different levels of agile and each different department within your organization will need to apply different levels of agility. And again, if we were just to take the two highest levels of agility, if you like, the idea that we've got agile process versus organizational agility, yes, we would expect full-on agility in your IT department, but we might not expect so much of the agile process and all that sort of fun stuff to live within, say, your compliance department, although we might expect that there would be some form of agility. What is exactly an agile organization? That's an important conversation because it starts to bring out a number of the values that we see as important and critical for agile organizations. And let me give you an example here. The idea that you want a creative organization something that is what we call an adocratic type organization. And again, some more discussions around what we mean by adocratic, what we mean by a clan organization or a market or a hierarchical type organization. All of these types of cultures form part of what we call the conflicting values framework. It's all part of the uh, OKI model or the um, organizational change assessment instrument. It's all part of the OKI, and I've given you a little diagram here to describe that in a little bit more detail. More importantly than anything else, and it's I think, I think it was Simon Sinek who wrote uh, a book some time ago, uh, Always Start With Why, and hence conversation number four here is about why should we go agile? Why should we get on this agile journey? It's about really understanding why as well as understanding, look, what benefits we get from it. We'll need to be, yes, a more collaborative type organization. And yes, we will be more creative as a result of it. But there quite often will be some things that you would want to explore, some problems that you want to overcome in order to become a more agile organization. But you know, this is where I'm saying that agile isn't really the ends, it's the means. It's the means to get you to solving these problems. Number five, the sponsorship through ownership. This is where we have the conversation now about what's important in terms of running an agile organization and how we run the transformation is about ensuring that we sponsor from the top and that the leaders of the organization own agility throughout the organization. 
Agility isn't something that's done in one department. It's something that needs to be done across the organization because it involves the collaboration of all the different departments. This is why it's the CEO or the HR director that really needs to sponsor and own the agile transformation. Because what you will find quite often is that when this change is rolled out, there's going to be pockets of people within the organization, and here's a, an expression for you, which we can have more chat about at some point, some people who will resist that change, and that's not a very useful thing to do sometimes. In fact, it's not a useful thing to do at all, uh, especially if the leaders have now decided, you know what, organizational agility, business agility is the way that we want to go. So in which case, it's about getting everyone behind the change and making sure the change happens. So when the reluctance to change, a better word than resistance, because quite often reluctance will always emerge, we deal with that effectively. And we deal with that with sponsorship from the top down. And this is, again, why sometimes agile transformations fail, because if they're not sponsored at the very top, what it really means is that the people can argue and think that it's just a discussion point. Oh, yeah, we don't think we should need to do agile in this part of the organization. No, that's not the point. The point is, what you should be asking yourself is, how much agility do you need in response to the overall change? And that is a dialogue, then, that cascades down through the organization. So just like we've got the Agile Leadership 101 here that happens at the very top of the organization, these same set of conversations now cascade through the organization, through the leadership, and the leadership own and sponsor those conversations. So look, I think that's enough to say for now. Uh, taking us as far as uh, conversation number five. And in the next video, I'll go through conversation six, seven, and eight, and that will give you hopefully a bit more in-depth into the levels of conversation that we have with the senior teams in the organization so that we can really get their heads into the place of why it's important for these people to have these conversations and then cascade those conversations throughout the organization. So thank you for your time. Uh, do remember to subscribe to my vlog here and I'll be putting more of these videos up in the very near future. There's some conversations here already that we started to touch on today that may need a bit more depth. So if you would like some more information about it, please feel free to contact me and I'll get those posted sooner.